Hello everyone and welcome to On the Couch. I'm Cody Decker. And I'm Mavish Khan, the start of our show today. We're here with Megan Cutting and Emma Muha, who are part of the production of Carrie. Thanks so much for joining us, ladies. How are you doing today? We're good. Mm -hmm. So yes. to start off, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Carrie is about? So Carrie is about a girl who lives a miserable life. Um, she's kind of bullied. She's an outcast. Um, she's an abusive over-controlling mother um, and is just you know bullied day to day <laughs> take it away Emma. <laughs> and then throughout the show you see that Carrie has this power that she has um, and she gets well she hits puberty and becomes a woman and you see how that power controls her and how it destroys everything around her okay. so Megan you play Carrie as the lead in the play Yes. What has been the challenge of that um, as far as preparing for the play as also as putting on the production? Um, it's, a, it's an interesting role to play physically, um, tapping into that younger side of me. She is a 17-year-old girl, um, but is very young for her age. Um, so getting into almost like a 14-year-old's mindset for me um, was interesting, um, especially coming from playing other roles that I've played recently. Or more older and also with such a with such a deep show with a character going through so much um, in their home life take trying not to take that home with you when getting into her psyche um, separating it from my personal life is always a challenge I think a lot of actors face when playing these types of roles Wow I never really thought about that that's really interesting but you have to uh kind of put yourself away when you leave. I never thought of that. Yeah. Um, so what has the production been like all together? How, how long does it take to even put it together? So our rehearsal process for the show has been three to four months. We got, they all got casted in around um, end of November into December. And then we started rehearsals right when school started. So we had our first read through the first week of classes and then we continued a full six days a week for three hours for the five days and then on Saturdays from 11 to 4 schedule throughout until we started to get into tech rehearsals which added up to like five to six hours a day mm -hmm. and then on the weekends it's a 10 hour day so it's been all in all the time with the show but yeah it's been a great experience it's a lot <laughs> but it was good it was good good now, Emma, uh, what is your role with the production and what are your duties? So I'm the stage manager, so and that consists of you being there, the first one in, last one out. And that means taking down blocking for everyone, all the characters. So if they're not there, if their understudy needs the blocking, you are able to give it to them. And then during the run of the show, I work a lot with Megan and taking cues off of her and her body language and stuff like that and just working with the t production team and so like lights and sound and all that aspects and with the cast all the time. So it's a very collaborative effort between the both of us. Yeah, you have a hand in pretty much everything with the production. So <laughs> I do. Is that a lot of pressure on you? Um, I think it is a lot of pressure, but I hope I take it with ease and confidence. It's just a lot to put on someone, plus having a school load but I know that I am doing a great job and that I have support of all my professors who are working on this production and the cast, which is really amazing to have. It's very awesome when you have a great team like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the differences from Carrie the book that you can notice in the musical? So there's a lot of differences um, and I've, that I've analyzed as I'm going through this um, journey. Um, you know, the Stephen King novel is grittier so much grittier and then when they wrote the musical um, it was much different when it first came out in 1988 but I'll, talk, I'll speak about the revival because that's kind of the version that we're doing um, it's much happier definitely <laughs> uh, they sugarcoat things a little bit more um, and it's it's not as gritty and some there's like some plot differences but but that's you know and you know, there's things that get lost in translation when anything's turned into a musical. Um, so, I think that's mostly that's mostly it. Um, yeah, and there's it's weird quirk. The um, gym teacher's name is completely different in the musical. We don't know why that is. Also, the gym teacher has a southern accent in the um, revival. Nobody knows why that is because they're in Maine. But that's just a random fun fact. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Megan, what is what have uh, you also played in? What, is, what other experiences do you have in acting? Uh, so last year I played Carla in Nine, who is 
maybe the polar opposite <laughs> from a Carrie White. She's a mistress. Um, and, you know, I had, like, a very seductive number, to say the least. And then I'm over here with no makeup and Carrie being, you know, torn across the stage by my abusive mother. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then before, between nine and um, Carrie, I played my favorite role in the entire world next to normal. Um, a 16 year old girl so it was an interesting I had like a little bit of a transition before going into a 17 year old girl <laughs> or if it's your hope so it's a big dramatic transition there yeah. yeah and Emma what about you what other productions have you been part of um well just this past year I started off the season part with Dracula so I was part of that production team as assistant stage manager so it was more behind the scenes and then I did, I was costume crew supervisor for Dance Macabre, which is our fall show. And then I took a show off from Titus. And then I recently have done um, the touring show that we did to promote the theater and dance. And I was the stage manager for that. And we toured around local high schools with Megan. And um, we promoted the art department. Wow, so I saw Dracula and I love Dracula. <laughs> um, how do you put those sets together? Are you looking at the book details or the script details? How does it all come together? So it's really what the director and the set designer decide collaboratively together. So you do obviously pull things from the script and from the book and ideas that you have. So right now on our Carrie script, it's a high school auditorium and a high school gym, but it also transitions and doubles as Carrie's house and um, Chris's house and like it has all different yeah. alternatives. It just depends on the lighting and like what the pieces we bring in to transition those moments into a different location. Now, Megan, I was the lead in a in a sixth grade play, so <laughs> I know it's nothing compared to all the all the effort that you put into this production. Um, the day you found out that you were the lead, what was your reaction? How excited were you? Um, I didn't think I was going to get cast, <laughs> so. Um, I was with my friend Sean, shout out, um, and we were looking at the cast list and I kind of like saw it and I just started sobbing and he was there like, and just like scoots me up into his arms. It was so funny. And, um, you know, I was with the, the girl who plays Margaret, um, she's my best friend and we, we were hoping, we were hoping. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, I was crying. I was very happy. Um, I wanted nothing more than this role. So. It's been great. It's been great. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So when can we watch you? Well, we only have one more show left. Okay. And it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Okay. At and what 7 time? 7 p.m. in Toe Hill Theater. And um, how much are tickets for it's Rowan kids? It's free for Rowan students with ID. And I believe it's $10 for faculty and staff and then 15 for general admission. Okay. And if there's anything you want your audience to take from all that you've put together, what would you tell them? Hmm. It's an interesting question. I think the story speaks for itself, um, for the most part. Um, seeing a girl brutally bullied on stage sends a strong message as it is. Um, and I think that that's mostly what we want to get across. And also just like the idea of kindness and how far that can stretch in somebody's life, um, I think is a really important message that we want to get across too. I think just like that, just what does it cost to be kind? Which is a other, line in the show. A line in the show, but I think it translates throughout the whole piece. And just to enjoy the experience and what, have your youth while you can. Yeah. All right. Well, ladies, thank you very much for coming on the Thanks couch today. Best of luck us. with your yeah. production. Thank Thanks. You. I hope everybody comes to see our last show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hopefully it'll be a nice crowd for you. Yeah. Toe yeah. Hill Theater, right? Toe Hill yeah, Theater. Toe Theater, 7 yeah. p.m. Be there, be square. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> thank you again, ladies. Thank you. Coming up after the break, we have this week's edition of Man on the Street and Hot Topics. Don't go away. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. 
You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Yeah, so I was supposed to get my pump on today. Because look, this, this isn't doing it. Who am I going to impress with this? And uh, you know, we can't do our episode inside the rec center for unknown reasons. So I'm going to have to work out outside. I'm full. Aerosmith to like g Easy. Or like... It, it'll range from like country to Drake, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if Drake will make a country album. <laughs> oh, what what is that? Can you, are they showing up on the camera? That's disgusting, dude, I can't climb this tree. They're gonna sting me, dude. I'll go to a different tree. No way. There's no way. I, what, 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 I don't do leg day, arm day. I do everything day, every day. Is that, is that how you, you go about it? That's how I go about it. We're an organized system. We're leg day, arm day type of thing. You don't think my system is organized? Um, I think that you're going to probably have a hard time. I mean, I've collapsed <laughs> before. I've, I've fallen straight to the ground, like not able to move, but... Well, my wrist is broken. One of the most important aspects of working out is the outfit. So, you're gonna want a sleeveless shirt. The more sleeveless, the better. I don't wear Nike. I wear Vans. You know why? Because Vans can. Socks? That's the integral part. Now that I got my work outfit, I'm ready to go. Um, hate cardio, but it's good, so I do that a lot. What's what's hate cardio? Do you like do you like get angry when you no, do it? No, I. Like, like you just you get you get all like exasperated. Uh, do you have any kind of music you prefer to listen to when you work out? Lil Uzi. <gasps> you ever seen him in concert? No. Very cool. Very. Cool. I would recommend. Um, do you work out with friends? Uh, sometimes, but they annoy me. So. Exactly. Friends are distracting, especially when you're working out. You don't need friends at all. I don't have any. You're my friend though. Sure. We can work out together, but exactly. separate because we can't, you know, we can't yeah, no, be distracted. Be See this? This is why I don't shave anymore. Okay. I gotta get back to working out. This took up a lot of my time. Okay. <laughs> oh, Dan, Dan, man, how you doing? But you, you tired? Doing awfully. You tired? But I gotta go. I just lapped on the rec center. So. Whoa, man, that's crazy. How are you gonna cool down, man? Oh, what? Oh, you gonna cool down? How are you gonna cool down? That's how you do it. I'm done. Dan, we gotta work out. I'm tired. We gotta work I out. I worked out for five hours we straight. We have to work out, Dan. I, I'm I not even just, I'm just starting. I'm exhausted. I'm just starting. Wow. Well, that was that was great. They always, I really would like to see them at a rec center class yeah. and just see the two of them interact with each other and see how that works. I'd like to see them too, like running on a treadmill and trying to outdo <laughs> each other. That would be that would be interesting. I, but Danny might have Sean beat though. I don't know. I mean, I like the socks a lot. Wait, we're starting now. Oh, okay. Alrighty. No. Like now, now. We didn't hear you when we weren't sure if you actually started or not. Okay. Well, now we have to start again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you like fade from black and give us a cue? There you go. Thank you, but I was <laughs> Oh my goodness, so that was great, as always. I would really like to see the two of them at a rec center class, though. I agree, or either the two of them going at it on the treadmill, trying yeah. to beat each other out. Or like, I want to see like men on the street like marathon training. That would, so be, that would be really, really cool. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Did Danny might have a tough time trying to deal with that, though. I don't know if he can do <laughs> Practice it. makes perfect, so uh, he'll get there. Very true, very true. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so let's get right into our hot topic. So, the new show came on Netflix, 13 Reasons Why. Have you seen it, Cody? I have not seen it, but I have heard all really good things about it, except one kid complained about the acting. 
The acting? The, the acting okay. in the show. That's so all I heard I am, about. like, embarrassingly obsessed with the show. And, like, I got Netflix recently, so I haven't binged anything. Like, I got it around, like, Christmas time, and I haven't really binged something. But this show, I was just... So it's about a girl named Hannah Baker, and she commits suicide. But she leaves 13 tapes, um, and each tape is a reason why she killed herself. And it was just done so well. It's obviously really terrible, really sad. It's a serious problem. But I think it was done really, really well. Like, I haven't seen anything like that in a really long time. So definitely something you should watch. I've gotten a lot of people into it, and I'm very proud of that. So hopefully you'll be the next person. Is it based on a true story at all? Or? It is not. It's based on a book. Okay. Um, the book came out, I think, about 10 years ago. Um, but um, no, but it's really, really well done. And I bet it is a true story for some people, honestly, because it's a very like realistic story that you can see happens again and again. Yeah, when I have time to sit down and I'm not in the studio, I'll try and, and check it out as best <laughs> you I can. You multitask. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, all right, the Pepsi commercial. Have you seen the Pepsi commercial? I haven't seen it, but again, I've just heard so many things Cody, about it. what are you doing? I'm always here. I'm You're... here doing these shows. I'm here covering sports and all that stuff. But... All righty, we got to give Cody a break. So whoever's listening, got to give Cody a break. Put someone <laughs> else here. So the Pepsi commercial basically was Kendall Jenner. She, it's like there's a protest going on, and kind of she saves the, the, the day by giving a Pepsi to the police officer. And a lot of civil rights groups are kind of like, if I really gave a Pepsi to a police officer, it wouldn't go as calmly or as great, just like that. There's a lot of backlash. There's a lot of craziness going on. What do you think? Do you even like Pepsi? I like Pepsi, okay. um, but I'll drink Pepsi or Coke. It's not one of those okay. things where I choose one or the other. And obviously, Pepsi might... products are here on campus. So. Okay, you might need to find Coke because, like the Pepsi thing, a lot of people are upset that you know they just weren't. They were. It's very tone deaf to what's going on today. But well, I don't know. We'll see. I know there's a lot of people on Twitter that are freaking out. Saturday Night Live kind of went off at it. Kendall Jenner hasn't responded yet. But I'm assuming she'll be very dramatic. Uh, on I would expect the on. response maybe not right away. It'll yeah, probably, like, absolutely. Probably die down a little bit, then maybe come absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and finally, this is my favorite one. Um, so there's a tattoo show on MTV um, where you go in with like a partner or a friend, and you choose where the tattoo goes, and you choose what the tattoo is. So I want to ask you, would you ever do that? Probably not. No. No. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of tattoos. Um, I don't mind them if they're like in places where you can't see them. Okay. Um, I personally myself would not get a tattoo. I just, that's just not my so thing. So think of you and your best friend, what would you get them? Oh, my Or someone goodness. at RTN, if you want to give a shout out to someone who, if you would go in and get them a tattoo. Why don't I give a shout out to uh, Brian Dickerson, our producer. Okay, alrighty. Um, I'd probably get him like the gold ribbon for a girl for the gold from our telephone. Okay. That would probably be something nice. I don't want to give him anything embarrassing. Okay, he, that's he, really nice. He's done a nice. really good job, actually. Some people so. on the show, they weren't that kind, so I appreciate your kindness there. Yeah. If you love to do a man on the street, go to a Chachi parlor and... I'd be, I'd be down for do that. Do you think Brian would be kind to you? I would hope so. Okay. I came and filled in for the show today, so I would hope he's going to be nice to me. Alrighty. I wonder if Danny and Sean would get tattoos or something. That would be really cute, actually. Yeah. I'd really want to see that. Maybe like a man on the street logo tattoo. Yeah, is there a logo? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll have to create that. Okay. We'll have to <laughs> All right. That. So final hot topic, kind of two hot topics put into one, uh, based off here on, on Rowan. So first, the Cole Car situation. Sophomores, as of next year, are not going to be allowed to have cars on campus unless they have uh, a job or, you know, live a certain amount far away or something like that. Um, it's a really big issue, and a lot of sophomores are not very happy about it. The point is, is it's going to clear up parking spaces on campus. Only about 700 spots, though. I don't know how much of an impact that's really going to make, but if I were the sophomores, I'd be a little upset, too, to not have a car on campus. Yeah, absolutely, especially because we don't live on a campus where, like, I know they're trying to have more public transportation, but we still don't live on a city campus where it's, like, easy to get to places. You do need a car if you live super far away. Absolutely. And coming in just to the campus and how much it's expanded, it's it's really tough to maybe kind of navigate around the campus already. So um, going to see how that all plays out. Maybe they reverse their decision. We'll see how it goes. But to go to my second point about housing, um, we have a lot more new housing coming on campus, and it's very exciting down in the downtown area. But the problem I've been hearing and the rumor mill I've been hearing is possibly sophomores having to stay in the older dorm buildings, like where they were freshman year. And freshmen will only be, it'll be only freshmen in Holly Point Commons, which is very interesting to have, you know, maybe the sophomores in older buildings and giving the freshmen the benefit of the doubt. 
Yeah, I can see that definitely being something people get upset about. I mean, I think when you're like a freshman, the freshman dorms, I mean, it's a freshman dorm, it's not that great. You want to move up, hopefully, as your years go by for the most part. So a lot of things are changing. I feel like the, the backlash always makes people, you know, think again about some things. Mm -hmm. I know the parking, I feel like, is a much bigger deal than the housing. At least you're getting housing. That was like the first problem a few years ago. But so hopefully now you'll you'll get parking. You're not going to be putting any people in the Marriott as yeah. far as housing or any of that's not going to happen. So could be a lot of positives here and, and everybody's going to have their opinion but we'll see how it goes next year absolutely well Cody thanks so much for joining us today it was awesome being here love being here all righty well that's it for us on, on the couch have a great week